Greetings, everyone. I have a question for you. Are we servants of Jesus Christ, or are we slaves? John MacArthur insists that the Bible should read slaves. Wherever there's a reference to a believer in Jesus Christ, it should not read servant. The word is slave, and it should be translated slave, and that's a paradigm that really helps us understand what it means to be a Christian. Let's look back in history. The church from the beginning, according to John MacArthur, has had this wrong for nearly 2,000 years. And indeed, if you go back and study the early church leaders, Polycarp, for example, a pupil of the Apostle John. Polycarp was the bishop of Smyrna. He lived from 69 AD to 155. And he said this common prayer, O God, the maker of heaven and earth, who didst give to thy venerable servant the holy and gentle Polycarp, boldness to confess Jesus Christ. At his trial, Polycarp said, quote, Eighty-six years I have served him, Jesus Christ, and he never did me any wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? And that's taken from a letter written by Polycarp to the church at Philippi. And Polycarp's student, Irenaeus, said the following prayer. Almighty God, who didst uphold thy servant Irenaeus? And after him, Hippolytus, 170 AD to 235 AD, the following was written of him. This is my brother Hippolytus and outstanding servant of Christ. And Hippolytus said this when he was asked to state his name. He said, Hippolytus, servant of the servants of Christ. And that's taken from a book titled The Roman Martyrs, Introduction, Translations, and Commentary by Michael Lapdige. Cyprian of Carthage, 200 AD to 258. He was Bishop of Carthage, and he prayed this, Almighty God, who gave to your servant, Cyprian, boldness to confess the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. And Tertullian, 150 to 229 AD, in his treatise, De Corona, chapter 15, he wrote this, Let us take not the devices of the devil, who is wont to ape some of God's things, with no other design than by the faithfulness of his servants, that is, the faithfulness of God's servants, to put us to shame and condemn us. Now, these are generally considered early leaders of the church, and they come from that lineage of teaching that comes from the apostles. And they all regarded themselves as servants, never slaves. Yet when MacArthur makes the following statement, he's leading us to believe that if we take his position, we're returning to a more historic understanding. So maybe this is making a resurgence. Well, it certainly can't be a resurgence of what the early church thought of the idea of servant versus slave. And it certainly was not the understanding of pre-Reformation Bible translators and those after them. And this sentiment is expressed in the various Bible translations. For example, John Wycliffe's translation of the New Testament, 2 Peter 1, verse 1 reads, Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. And then Jude 1, verse 1, Judas, the servant of Jesus Christ. Romans 1, verse 1, Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ. And Titus chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, a servant of God. And William Tyndale's translation of the New Testament, the same verses read the same way, always servant of God, servant of Jesus Christ. And this is the same reading you're going to find in the Reformation Bibles, Coverdale's Bible, the Geneva Bible, and the King James Bible that came off the press in 1611, the one authorized by King James, 
always uses servants of Jesus Christ. The word is slave, and it should be translated slave, and that's a paradigm that really helps us understand what it means to be a Christian. So are we to understand from MacArthur's statement that the martyrs from the first century onward up through the Protestant Reformation got this wrong and didn't know what it meant to be a Christian? Isn't that a little bit hard to believe? And I have to ask this question. How is it possible that the church for nearly 2,000 years regarded themselves as servants, not slaves? Why is it that the Bible translations say servant and not slave? And why is it that John MacArthur, all of a sudden, 2,000 years later, after 2,000 years of history, says they all got it wrong? All of them. I don't think so. And I covered the etymology of the word doulos and where it comes from and how that traces back to the word servant. And I discussed that in detail in a previous message, so I'll not go there. John MacArthur is way off base. John MacArthur's issue with servant is one of Calvinism, it's not one of translation. And indeed, he would like to undo the entire history of the church on this subject. But let's give John MacArthur the benefit of the doubt for the moment. Let's just say he's right. The early church got it wrong. The great translators of Bibles, Erasmus, Tyndale, Wycliffe, the 54 translators of the King James Bible, the Bishop's Bible, the Geneva Bible, and so on and so forth, the Coverdale Bible, all these scholars were wrong about this, right up through history. And John MacArthur got it right. Servant should read slave. Let's say he's right. And he takes that NASB Bible and he changes 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to read Simon Peter, slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. And he changes Jude chapter 1, verse 1, and so on. And he changes all of those verses to suit his current understanding. Does that fix anything, or does that make a greater problem? I'll tell you right now, I wish he would do that, because it creates such a problem for him in other places that he has no idea what he's dealing with. And I believe the translators of the NASB and the publisher would know that changing the word servant to slave opens up a huge can of worms, translational problems that cannot be resolved without totally ignoring the Greek texts. They will not go down that road because of other things. And I'm going to show you one of those other things. Now, John MacArthur's argument goes like this. There's no such thing as a lord who doesn't have slaves. No such thing as a slave who doesn't have a lord or a master. A servant is somebody who works for a wage. A slave is somebody who is owned. That's a big difference. The idea of slavery is a paradigm which makes sense out of the New Testament. A servant is paid. A slave is unpaid. And we are slaves unpaid in Christ. No wages. That's his logic. And so therefore, we are slaves in Christ. That's his argument. When you read Matthew chapter 20, many things come to light. And this is why I say, John MacArthur, please change the word servant to slave in your NASB study Bible, because I want to see what your translators are going to do with Matthew chapter 20. Because Matthew chapter 20 is a picture of the church, of truly born-again believers working in the mission field, working at the Great Commission, and they receive a wage. Even his corrupt NASB Bible in chapter 20, verses 7 and 8, say that the workers in the vineyard receive a wage. They're paid their hire. And indeed, all the Bibles that I've read, give or take a few, but even the most corrupt of the corrupt, refer to the workers in the vineyard, in the field of evangelism, born-again Christians receive a wage. How is he going to change those verses? Because everybody knows that's a parable of true believers in the service of Christ. This is why I don't trust 
most of what comes out of John MacArthur's mouth because he doesn't understand how the scripture witnesses of itself. He has no idea. He has an agenda, and he's going to support that agenda no matter what. And others like him teach the same message. They will insist duolos should be translated slave. Now let me read from Matthew chapter 20, verse 7, which reads, They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us, he saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatever is right, that shall ye receive. And then verse 8 says, So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard, that's Jesus Christ, saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire. The laborers laboring in the vineyard of Jesus Christ, these have to be born again Christians. And Jesus says, give them their hire. Hire means wages. And indeed, John MacArthur's NASB, I believe, says wages. Well, if these are people who are born again, laboring in Jesus' vineyard, then should they not be slaves, receiving no wages? What's he going to do with this type of a verse that clarifies the doctrine that we are not slaves? were servants paid or hire at the end of the day, and that is eternal life. Jesus is very clear. We are servants, laborers, who are to be paid a hire or a wage. So you see what would happen with John MacArthur's Bible. He would have Jude as a slave receiving no hire, yet we know Jude was a laborer in the vineyard of Jesus Christ. Jude was a saved person. Paul was a saved person, laboring in the vineyard of Jesus Christ. Yet here in Matthew, those who labor in the vineyard receive a wage. See, John MacArthur can't have it both ways. There has to be a consistency in the internal witness. And indeed, the word duolos has the primary meaning of servant. And you'll find that word Duolos traces back to another Greek word that indeed meant servant. That's why the translators, for the last 2,000 years, Erasmus, considered perhaps the most brilliant Greek scholar ever, I don't think anybody disputes that, Tyndale, Wycliffe, Coverdale, the list goes on, the reformers, the 54 translators of the authorized 1611, they all used the word servant. The early church leaders, Polycarp, Irenaeus, Tertullian, Hippolytus, the list goes on, all referred to themselves as servants, because that's the doctrine that was being taught. And that is what is being taught by Jesus in Matthew chapter 20. The servant receives his hire. The servant is the laborer in the vineyard Of Jesus Christ. Therefore, when Jude says, I, Jude, servant, he is consistent with what Jesus taught. If he said, I, Jude, slave, his statement would not be consistent and he would contradict Jesus. Then he would make Jesus a liar. And John MacArthur would make Jesus a liar. And that's the main problem with his proposition notwithstanding the academic and scholarly errors of his assertions. The internal witness of the scripture must not contradict itself. John MacArthur, I do not believe, is led by the Holy Spirit. He uses four corrupt Bibles. He has four study Bibles. They're all corrupt, every one of them. Every one of them has internal corruptions in the witnesses. And we know what is the pure preserved word of God, not because a scholar told us, but because the witnesses do not contradict themselves. If you're reading a Bible in English and the witnesses contradict themselves, it's not the word of God. You don't need a scholar to tell you that. You need to study to show yourself approved. Already the NASB corrupts the internal witness. If John MacArthur wants to change the word servant to slave, 
he's going to be introducing another very obvious corruption. That's the problem. Duolos should be servant. That is what the church regarded it as, and it should remain that way. God bless you. Thank you for listening.